Hello, everyone. A couple of administrative items before we get started. Due to the large number of attendees, we will be muting everybody's microphone during the session. You can type questions in the questions pane located in the control panel. I will answer some questions at the end of the session. Also, feel free to send us comments about the webinar or additional questions to webinars at csiamerica.com. Also, all web webinars will be recorded and posted on our website, as well as responses to all unanswered questions. Okay, so in this example, I'll show three different types of shear wall design ETABs can, can, can perform. I'll discuss how to define peer and spandrel labels. We'll also run through an analysis and design, and I'll, and I'll generate the model as well, showing different analysis and design output. And finally, I'll discuss an optimization feature that will be released in the near future. Okay, let's get started. So illustrating the three different types of shear wall design in ETABs, I'm gonna click on the design menu and go to shear wall design. And if I just select a few of these shear walls prior, I wanna show you all the options which are available. So there's three main types. It's simplified compression and tension design. So this designs planar walls, and we'll, we'll start off with this example. Next, we'll move on to uniform reinforcing. This approach can be uh, used for design or check of walls using uniform reinforcing patterns. And this is typically the default design. So that's the second item we'll go over. Lastly, this general reinforcing option, which can design or check walls using arbitrary reinforcing patterns defined in the section designer program. So we'll go through all of this here this morning. Okay, so this is what the final model is going to look like. I'm going to start from scratch here and generate the model. So under the define menu, let's go ahead and click on section properties and we'll click on wall sections. I have a few of these already defined. And if we click on modify show, we can see the wall property data, which can be defined. So the wall material can be defined here. We have some defaults that can be included here. Um, notional size data, modeling types, we have shells and membranes. So shells, they include both in-plane membrane stiffness and out-of-plane plate bending stiffness are provided for the section, where membranes, only in-plane membrane stiffness will be included. So for this specific model, I'm going to click on the shell modeling type. And we'll leave the thickness as 8 inches. So let's go ahead and draw some walls here. I'll click on the draw rectangular floor and I'll click on the wall property here, wall eight. And I'll just click from point to point here, generating a couple different walls. So you'll notice as I drew the wall at the base, restraints were automatically included at the base of the shear wall itself. So if I wanted to include some openings, there are a couple different ways to do this. I can click on the draw wall openings tool located here on the left hand side and define the width, height, bottom distance and the distance from the left edge. And if I lock these properties, you'll notice I can just drop in these opening parameters uh, in the roof story, roof level as well uh, as the base itself. So I can draw openings in this fashion, I could actually mesh the wall and punch holes in the wall itself and I'll show you how to do that here next. So if I click undo, I'm going to select the top wall and bottom wall. We'll go to edit, 
edit shells, and we're going to divide the shells. Now there are many different options to choose from. Today we're just going to punch um, the divide quadrilateral and triangles into three by two areas here. If we click OK, you'll notice now that the shear wall has been meshed and I can simply select a couple of these walls and delete them to generate openings as well. So there are always a few different ways to perform these action items here in eTabs. Okay, so before running any design, we need to assign peer labels. Peer labels must be assigned to all shear walls uh, before running any analysis and design. This way we can access uh, output information very easily. Okay, so prior to doing that, let me just put a couple loads on this structure. We're going to select a few joints at the top. If I click on design, uh, load patterns. In this specific model, we have some dead load, live load, and I'm going to add this lateral X uh, seismic load uh, on the tops of the walls. Just so we have some load, we'll get some decent numbers here in the design output once we get there. So after the joints are selected, here in the bottom left-hand portion of the screen, it's kind of a bookkeeping system. It shows me exactly what I have selected prior to performing an action on it. I'll click on Assign, Joint Loads, and we'll click on this lateral X load pattern, and we'll put 10 kips on each one of these joints. Okay, so let's get into a discussion about peer and spandrel labels. This is a very common and sometimes can be confusing uh, topic uh, when it, in regards to ETABs. I'm going to bring up a little image here. So peer and spandrel labels must be assigned to walls before we can obtain either output forces or design the object itself. So the way peers work, they will report forces and perform the design at the top and bottom of each of the object for each story. Spandrels, on the other hand, output forces and design at the left and right ends of the objects, not at the top and the bottom like peers. OK, so we have this image here, this figure A. So wall piers, they're always associated with the story level directly above them. So in this specific figure, the upper level wall piers are associated with the roof and lower level wall piers associated with the second level. So because these wall piers are associated with specific story levels, it's okay if wall peer labels can repeat at different levels. Um, so you can see we have P1 at the roof level and also at the level below, and that's okay. They're separated by stories. So when we refer to this wall pier at the roof, we're referring to the pier all the way across the entire width of the wall that's made up of these five area objects. And similarly for P2 at the roof level is made up of two area objects right here. Uh, to the left of the door opening. So wall pier design is performed at the top and bottom of each pier, like I was saying. So for wall pier 2 at the roof level, design is performed at the top and bottom as well. So anytime you have a pier label, such as P5 in this case, this is going to be acting as one wall. So in this case, it's going to be reporting information at the far left and right-hand sides. So it's going to take these three area objects, combine the forces associated with those shear walls, and conduct a design based upon the code you provide. So similarly, we're, we're talking about wall, wall peer labeling. I'll scroll down here and show you something about uh, spandrels as well. So as I was saying, wall spandrel forces are output to the left and right ends of wall spandrel elements. Each area object that makes up a part of the wall may be assigned one spandrel label and or one peer label. So you kind of think of it as a spandrel as a, as a beam. It's going to be reporting information at uh, 
uh, the top and bottom of the wall. So these are typical uh, for putting them above a kind of in, in a header situation above an opening as we're showing here. So why don't we go ahead and define, excuse me, assign peer and spandrel labels uh, to our model. So I'll keep things pretty simple. I'm going to select all the wall elements here on the left-hand side. I'll click on assign shell peer label. And we'll select P1. And we'll do the same thing for the walls on the right-hand side. Uh, but this time, we'll assign shell uh, peer labels and assign them the P2 label. And we'll click Apply. And for these area objects, we'll select and assign uh, spandrel elements, spandrel labels. And that's found in the same location except under Assign Shell Spandrel Label. And we'll click S1. OK, so now we have some basic geometry, uh, some, some loading. We've actually assigned peer and spandrel labels. Um, so let's go ahead, and we're almost ready to run the design here. And we'll dive into some output and see exactly, uh, for the three separate scenarios, what kind of output is generated. OK, so prior to doing that, let's, let's take a look at design, shear wall design, and view revised preferences. So this is where you select the specific design code, all the different parameters associated with it, the fee factors, um, utilization factor limits. So all of these can be assigned on a global level for the entire model. So for this example, we'll run the AS, ACI uh, 318. You can see these are all the different codes. We have many domestic uh, international codes that are embedded here in the program. So for this first example, as I was saying, we're going to click on the simplified C and T design approach first. So if I shear wall design, assign peer sections, we'll click on simplified C and T design. So now if we click on view revise overwrites, We can see that this is the C and T option has been assigned. If we wanted to, we could assign edge members using the DB dimensions for both left and right sides, top and bottom. So we can kind of go through here, making sure the simplified T and C option has been applied, and all the different parameters are set correctly using this 4,000 psi concrete. Okay. So now, once this is done, we can go ahead and run the analysis and then run the design and take a look at some output. OK, once the analysis is run, we can go to design, shear wall design, a start design check. OK, so the required longitudinal reinforcement is displayed on the wall. If you right click on the wall, it will bring up the detailed design information sheet showing flexural, shear, and boundary check information. I'll make this a little bigger for everybody to see. So we have the details of the definition of the wall, uh, peer leg location, flexural design, uh, tension reinforcement, uh, compression reinforcement are shown here in these tables. and these are the governing design combinations. I'll, I'll touch upon that here in a minute. So it's go, showing the different combos and information for it, shear design, top and bottom, and all the different values associated with that calculation, as well as boundary element check if required uh, based upon this code. Um, just to touch quickly upon load combinations, 
So what I've shown you, we had discussed load patterns, dead live and lateral, uh, for this specific model. If I click on define load combinations, so these are all the combinations that were automatically generated by the program based upon the load patterns and the code I'd selected. I can click on add default design combos and click on uh, concrete shear wall design and all of these combinations will be automatically generated. I can simply put the cursor on each one of these combos uh, to get detailed information about uh, each one of these combos. You can see in this 1.3 dead, one live, and one uh, lateral X. So now once those are defined, I can go to design, shear wall design, select design combinations. Now by default, all of those combos which were generated will be automatically included in the design combinations. Uh, so that's, you'll notice when I right clicked on the design sheet, it showed me D-Wall 6 was one of the design, governing design, com design combos. And this is how to make sure that those are being included in the design. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through each one of the three different options for shear wall design. Next one is being uh, the uniform reinforcing. So we'll just go through the same steps quickly, assign peer sections, but this time I'll click on uniform reinforcing. In this form, you can specify the distributed uniform reinforcing and the end bars. You can also select check versus design. So that's a neat feature that's included in eTabs. The user has the ability to enter in its own rebar for perhaps an existing structure, and eTabs will check it, giving a DC ratio in the output. Or, of course, eTabs can, uh, if you click on reinforcement to be designed, it will give you the minimum amount of reinforcement required in the wall based upon the code you've chosen. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on uh, to be designed. We'll click OK. And I just like to make sure that that was uh, assigned properly. To do that, we'll go back to shear wall design, view revise overwrites, and you can see uh, uniform reinforcing was selected. So we'll go ahead and run the design again. Just takes a second. Start check design. Okay, so now the total reinforcing longitudinal is shown on the screen here. Again, you could right click to get detailed information uh, about the check uh, or design. So if I selected check, it would give you the DC ratio. Um, same, same, similar information as to the previous uh, run. Flexural design, shear design, just some uh, boundary element check uh, governing uh, shear wall combinations and these sorts of things can be included in here as well. So if I wanted to look at other options on the screen uh, for output, of course, you can see them in that detailed report, output report. If I go to design, shear wall design, you can click on design information. So if I wanted uh, DC ratios, shear reinforcing, these are all the options which are available to the user to have them view on the screen. So if I clicked on shear reinforcing, you can click apply and see that now they're being shown on the screen, not only for output, but for input as well, material, peer section information. Um, if, if there were any failures in the design, things were overstressed, those can be shown on the screen here as well. Okay, lastly, and this is kind of a, a unique uh, option available in eTabs, it's the general reinforcing option. So prior to using this, 
we need to define a section designer section. So let me show you how to do that. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways. First, we're going to go to design, uh, shear wall design, and we'll click on design, or excuse me, define general peer sections. So I'll click add a peer section. So I could add a new peer section, but I can also select uh, start from existing wall peer. So eTabs, it recognizes once you've assigned a peer label, it recognizes on story two, there are there's a peer that has P1 and P2 label associated with it. So it will grab that, it knows the dimensions, it knows the thickness, and will grab it and enter it into the section designer program. So here, uh, I can right click on the reinforcing to change the size of the rebar, uh, the spacing, number of bars, uh, clear cover, all of these things can be changed quite easily here in the program. We can make any changes, we'll click OK. And what we can do is assign this section um, using the general reinforcing tool to the specific wall itself. Okay, just a quick side note, I wanna jump to just another program covering the same topic. What I could also do is if, if I wanted to have include columns on the edge of the walls, you can see here, um, I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. So we have our shear wall, and just a default concrete column on the left and right hand sides. So what I did here is I assigned a P1 label to the wall, but I also am assigning a P1 label to those column elements too. So when now, if I do that and go to design, shear wall design, define general peer sections, those columns are now included in the section wall a section designer section here, make this a little bigger. So not only can I make changes to the shear wall uh, reinforcement, but I can also make changes to the column reinforcement as well. So now this will be included in the design. Um, I can have, if, if it's an existing structure, I can of course do a check. It'll give me a DC ratio or an actual design of the combination of wall and columns. So then of course, if you're doing other types of analysis, hinges can be applied to these column elements. Um, and so that's that's a very uh, unique tool that's been embedded here in eTabs, uh, probably for the past couple of versions. So anyway, click OK. It's a quick diversion. We'll get back to the other model. But I wanted to show these two main options available when you're using Section Designer. Okay, back to this model. Now that we have this peer one defined, we can go back to design, shear wall design, um, assign peer sections, and now we've covered the first two. Now we're clicking on general reinforcing. So this is where we've defined our own reinforcement and we're gonna apply this uh, to the walls. So peer one, now it's asking me, okay, which section do you want? I can have multiple section designer sections. I just have one and I'm going to select this peer, peer one. And let's see, why don't we have it checked for this example? So assign the section to the wall, peer one, top and bottom. We'll click okay. And now just similar, oh, hold on. Let's see if I may need to unlock the model. Let's see if that worked. So now, we'll, just as we did before, we'll go to uh, peer overwrites. Okay, that works. So we have general reinforcement, uh, peer section, top and bottom. And we're gonna, for this example, we'll do a check. So again, we'll quickly run the analysis and the design and take a look at some output. Okay, right clicking on the on the screen itself, so it shows me uh, DC ratio. Um, 
make this a little bigger here to so again very similar output except this time because we did check um, it's giving me a a dc ratio right here of course it's very lowly stressed i didn't put that much loading on the structure or maybe the wall was too thick so again all this information can be uh, accessed very easily when i right click of course all of those nice detailed forms can be uh, exported to a nice report format uh, using the reports tool right here right clicking on the add project report modify show and you can include the shear wall design information in any of the reports you can see here summary results calculations you can what i like to do is select certain peers and or spandrels um, so it really reduces the the size of the report uh, instead of selecting all of them Okay, um, one thing I failed to mention is prior to running the design is you can actually set the rebar selection rules for all wall piers and or spandrels. So it's giving me uh, total control of the vertical bars for confined and or unconfined zones, uh, transverse bars for both unconfined and confined as well. So this gives the user uh, a lot of control for the rebar as well. Okay, I uh, wanted to quickly touch upon another powerful feature that's going to be included in eTabs uh, is when designing shear walls, the ability to select the thinnest wall section that satisfies lateral drift requirements. So this section is picked from an auto select list. It's, I quickly touched upon that in the beginning. So if I go back to section properties, wall sections, I have multiple walls defined all of different thicknesses but now if I click add new property, under property type, I can click on auto select list. So this is the list that a user creates, similar to what is done for steel frame design. Uh, we have a few different wall sections. We can create this auto select list and add those specific walls to this list. So what it does, it starts with the median section. Um, I'm jumping, getting ahead of myself. So what we do is we define this auto select list, click OK, and we assign these this auto select list to all the walls. Auto. And then what we can do here is under this design set lateral displacement targets. So what we can do here is for a specific story, for a specific joint label, uh, I can select a joint here first. And it's uh, in a specific uh, load case. Um, you can set the lateral displacement target and it's kind of an iterative process. So I, say if I didn't want, I wanted this maximum displacement to be set to perhaps 1.5 inches and didn't want it to exceed it. Um, it's going to run the analysis and the design, and it will take a look at the out the lateral drift and seeing if it exceeds it. So initially, it probably won't exceed, and it'll, as an iterative process, it'll go through each one of the wall thicknesses, finding the optimum wall thickness um, to match the lateral displacement drift uh, criteria, which in this case would be under one inch. So that's a very useful tool. Saves the user quite a bit of time in unlocking the model, reassigning the wall uh, thickness, running the analysis and design just to make sure the deflection criteria has been fulfilled. So that is something that's coming up here shortly here in eTabs. Uh, that's a very useful tool as well. Um, I know I've talked a lot, discussed a lot here in a short period of time. So under help documentation, uh, you can actually access a lot of the information, in this case for uh, verification, uh, shear wall design. You can ask as many different examples, um, can be looked, displaying uh, specific uh, documents uh, covering many different topics for different codes. Also, 
under help documentation, you can go to uh, shear wall design. And these are all the different codes that are available uh, in great detail. You can see all the information associated with that, as well as verification. OK, so let's take a look at a couple questions here. All right, one second. OK, so it's a question, uh, what is the difference between um, Okay, so excuse me. So the walls, this question about, do the walls need to be meshed like slabs before running the analysis? Um, so the way I did it today was I had manually meshed the walls by breaking them into pieces and then assigning pier and spandrel labels to them. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do that. If I uh, click on any one of these wall elements, I can go to assign shell and you'll see there's wall auto mesh options here as well so this is internal meshing so i can have the program internally mesh so it wouldn't physically break the walls into pieces um, it, this would do an internal mesh you can auto rectangular mesh there's some default options here the reason why i broke the walls physically is because i wanted to do or assign peer labels and spandrel labels to the walls for design so there are two different options available to the user. Uh, it says, can section designer be used to design uh, C and L shape walls? Absolutely. So I can quickly show you an example of that. So basically what you do is similarly what I did um, for uh, defining the columns at the ends of the walls. I'll just open up that model here. If I just deleted uh, these columns and uh, assigned an L shape, so I'll just bring this in plan, quickly draw an L shaped or C shaped wall and turn off the extrusion there. And I'm going to draw a wall and plan. I'll just click from point to point here. So as long as the walls have the same peer label, so in this case, I'll assign a P1 label to each one of these walls. And I can bring those into Section Designer as well. So if I click on Assign, Shell, peer label, and I'll apply peer label to each one of these walls now. As you can see, P1 has been assigned to both walls. And I'll go to design, shear wall design, define general sections. So you'll notice that it brings in the, you can have a C-shaped wall, L-shaped wall, whatever you like. The key is making sure the walls and or frames have the same peer section on the same level. That's the key there. Uh, yes, so some questions here about having the wall. Can it, can it be, does it have to be rectangular? No, it can be C-shaped, L-shaped. Um, so what should the mesh size or ratio to follow? So that's a, that's a good question. If we take a look at that, let's take a look at some default values here. Uh, we'll go back to this other model. So you can see the key is to kind of play around with a little bit. You don't want the mesh to be so dense that it's going to uh, really increase the amount of runtime and design time. Um, 
so you're kind of having to find uh, that happy median here. So in this case, I was did a three by two. If we take a look at some default, if we go back to that um, shell uh, wall auto mesh options, you can see here are a maximum mesh size. So this is every four feet. Now you can see, I think the, each one of these walls is uh, 24 feet. So it's going to break it into, you know, six sections. Uh, I like this default. Um, breaking it into every, you know, four or five uh, feet for a 24 foot wall. Again, I, I don't want to give a, just an absolute number. I think it's important to play with it a little bit just to make sure uh, you're getting accurate results, but not making the mesh so dense that it's going to really increase the runtime. Uh, some questions about uh, signing peer to vertical objects and spander labels to horizontal objects. Uh, yes, th that is the case, as I was talking about before. And I think I discussed that a little bit uh, in the discussion of peer and spander labels. Up here. So yeah, for, for this model, we assume that the wall objects on the left were of the opening were to be assigned P1 labels and P2 on the right um, due to the fact that uh, peers are going to be giving information at the far left and right ends and of the wall, spandrels top and bottom. Uh, how do I assign columns to the corner of a C section? Uh, just similar as to what we did before in 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 this. So I, for in this case, I could define draw a wall at this location and this location at the corners of a C shape wall, L shape wall, whatever you want to do, and making sure that column has the same peer label as the one in the wall, and then you'll be able to bring that into Section Designer quite easily. Okay, um, sorry, I won't be able to get to all the questions here today, but all of them will be answered uh, in a PDF format that will be posted here today, along with the, the recording of this webinar. So if you go to our website under uh, support webinars, you can see all the rec old recorded webinars and all associated questions that were not answered here today will be answered um, in detail. Uh, by this afternoon. Again, I wanted to thank everyone for joining me here today. Uh, please check our website for further webinars, uh, more webinars that are going to be introduced here in the next few weeks. And again, thank you very much. Please uh, add in the web in the survey that's going to be uh, distributed after the webinar. Uh, please answer the questions and please include some additional comments uh, if you like uh, regarding to this webinar and future webinars. Thank you very much.